<laughs> here, behind you, there is an open seat here. Thank you. Hello, I am Nettie. So you are the new student. Have you met Professor Ronan yet? <clears throat> Shall we begin? <laughs> Welcome to year five of charms. Now, this will be a crucial year in your education on the art of charm work, but I am confident that we will take hold with a passion and rigor requisite of such a challenge. Right, now, everyone, please open your textbooks to page 517. But before we begin, can anyone here tell me the difference between the incantations of the Color change and growth charms. Anyone? Anyone? Hmm? Ah, 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 ah. I am afraid it is too late to study now. No, no. Mm. My, the summer months must have really taken a toll on you all. <laughs> By the looks of it, you all spent your holidays practicing obliviate on one another. <laughs> uh, mm. Do you even remember how to perform a basic summoning charm. Hmm? Hmm. Well, it seems that we are in dire need of review. Everyone get into pairs and take positions on opposite sides of the classroom. Now let's put those textbooks to use as the blunt objects you so believe they are and take turns summoning them out of one another's hands. Only one book will be needed per partnership, Miss Dale. Thank you. Get into place now. No cheating. No, no, no. Akio. Akio. That is not bad. You are a swift learner. I see a lot of potential, but remember, potential is nothing without practice. Keep at it. You might just rival Miss Onai here. Very good, everyone. That's enough of that. Well, as you all seem to have the basics down, and it is an exceptionally lovely day, I was thinking that we might have ourselves a little excursion outside for a spot of fresh air. After me. I've always found that fun goes hand in hand with mastery, as I'm sure the Quidditch players amongst us would agree. Hmm? <laughs> so, what better than a bit of sport to put our prowess with the summoning charm to the test, right? <laughs> <sighs> So why don't we have our newest students start us off? Hmm? Take care of everything I had asked you to do. Professor, I completed all of your most recent... Well done. Then you're ready to learn Expelliarmus. Pay close attention. The disarming charm may often be all you need to defeat the most powerful dark witches and wizards you might encounter. Pay close attention. Um... Spellcasting requires a focused mind and a steady wand.
Good morning, Professor Garlic. How wonderful it is to see you again, Lenora, dear. Oh, here. You'll need these for today's class. Uh, um, uh, A little treat for your auntie. Welcome the newest rose in our garden. We do look forward to growing together. How thrilling it is to have everyone back together again. <coughs> this year will be filled with enchantment and excitement, but the most important thing cultivated in herbology is knowledge. The prudent herbologist is no more afraid of the venomous tentacular than the bouncing ball. Now then, today we will be acquainting ourselves with the mellifluous tuber known as the mandrake root. Accio. Let's see if we can't make our fibrous friends a bit more comfortable, shall we? <laughs> First, let's protect our ears. <laughs> now, everyone, grip their mandrake by the tendrils and give it a firm tug should envelop the root like a warm, dirty blanket, putting the mandrake right at ease. Repera! I'm very sorry about that. Yours was a bit mature, I'm afraid. All right, then. Off you go. Splendid work, everyone. Splendid work, everyone. Now... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Professor Hecate! Perhaps you'd be good enough to blast each other to pieces on your own time. I get new students every year, but I only have one Hebridean black skull. It was a token from the great poacher raid of 1878. No doubt you've heard of it. <laughs> now, you may be asking and yourself how right there. like me single-handedly took out the largest poacher ring in eastern Wales and lived to boast about it. Knowledge. To the wise, age matters very little. Today we will review a spell that has saved me from death at the hands of dark wizards more times than I care to remember. Levioso. Levioso. A levitation charm. Levioso! A surprised opponent is a weak opponent. Care to defend yourself, Master Pruitt? No? One thing I've learned as an unspeakable is the value of simplicity, especially in the heat of battle. Now, let's practice what we've just learned, starting with something small. No. Why do they call it Libioso? It be Libioso. Now, let's try something a little larger. <laughs> God damn it. Libioso. Let us begin with a basic cast. See how the dummy deflected your cast. This time, cast Levioso first, then the basic cast. Remember, a surprised opponent is a weak opponent. 
as Master Pruitt so artfully helped me demonstrate. <laughs> well done. Very good, but the best way to practice is by dueling. We'll start with you two. Duelist, take your marks. Time for a proper Hogwarts welcome. Now, <laughs> I want a fair duel using only Levioso, basic cast, and Protego. You may begin. In today's lesson, we will cover a truly thrilling event. The Goblin Rebellion of 1752 and all its triumphant tragedy. But more specifically, uh, we will address the devastating effects it had on the wizard milling industry. Throughout the many goblin battles, countless wizard cloaks were lost. Actually, we do know the number. Six hundred and thirty-two. But history occurs outside the classroom. And look, it's time for my constitutional. One can practically osmos the history flowing through Hogwarts. I think the professor wants us to follow him. And now for a stroll to the bell tower entrance hall. Along with the rest of the castle, it was completed in the late early Middle Ages. The hall and the bell towers that loom above it contain myriad interesting artifacts. Good to see you again. Recovered from that nasty bout of dragon pox, have we? I, uh, that was... Are you? Well, and, uh, welcome. No doubt you're eagerly anticipating my analysis of various wizarding count. Not all goblins are rebellious. Some venture into wizarding politics, such as Irgit the Ugly. Some are talented artisans, such as Bragbor the Boaster. Did you say Bragbore? Hmm. Well known for his metalwork. I would imagine much of his goblin wrought iron and silver. Now, where were we? Back to our class topic for today. Grimbold Weft. Another notable... Oh man, this will crash the game. No, he did not. Oh yes, I see. Yes, I rather in the thrill of the scholarly pursuit. Now, let's turn our attention to the agreeability and general good nature. He's also nearby. Standing in eternal but symbolic watch over the bell tower is a retinue of loyal knights. Statues of knights, I should clarify. Keen eyed students will spot this statue of Sir Alec. This unassuming smudge is rumored to be the location of the very first successful use of Bombardo. His fame was not this won by vanquishing foes in single combat. Companion. People have warm and approachable demeanor was celebrated by old friend Professor Binns. I found this. Ah, well done. Alas, Sir F. Puddle's affability was he so beloved, was he that even some goblins more of course that did not bode well with the rest of the goblins. Most of whom... Goblins and wizard kind of... Yes, well, it takes a cauldron to raise a chisperful, as they say. Mm, history does tend to repeat. The 
wise student such as yours. That was not a that was a strong That's exciting, I suppose. Perhaps you're due for an adventure. Ladies, Professor Shah. Astronomy is not divination. You won't find the mysteries of the cosmos charted out on your palms or at the bottom of your teacups. Alas, the heavens remain hazy to the starry-eyed. Now, if you were to devote yourselves to persistent and painstaking observation, you just might catch a glimpse. With that in mind, please take your telescopes. Tonight we will be on the observation deck. Still don't have your own. You can't be the new student forever, you know. You can share with Mr. Takar. Here, I can adjust that for no, you. No, no, bring it into focus on your own. Now, I expect all of you to put in your stargazing hours outside of class. Is that clear? But, Professor, it's freezing out. Mere cold didn't stop the great stargazers of the past. Look only to the astronomy tables they erected throughout the highlands from which they gazed millennia ago on the very self-same stars above us. Is that clear? <laughs> yes. Dismissed. Hello. I don't believe we've met officially. Hello, Amit. It's nice. Did I hear Professor Shaw say that you don't have your own telescope? That's very kind of you, Amit. I'm certain. I finally got my hands on the new Celestia Contemplor. You've heard of it, I assume? I mean, it's only the pinnacle of all personal stargazing implements. But my old model, goblin cut glass, first rate optical enchantments, hate to think such a fine oh. instrument. Well, uh, I... Think nothing of it. Anyway, the telescope's in the storage room right underneath us. You can't... I have some, uh, reading to finish on the lower deck. Come find me there afterwards, and... This was his old telescope. Looks practically brand new. Ah, a pristine light. I have the telescope. I would not offer a prospective stargazer a third-rate lunar scope. <laughs> but there is... Yes? What is... You remember those astronomy tables Shaw was going on about? It just so happens I've been reading up on them a little. And it seems there may be one right here at Hogwarts. I believe... And you need someone to help you find it. I do. Are you it? No one from the Gobstones Club will go with me. Said they'd rather get spit at by a stone than... Well, they are cowards. Let us get moving while the stars are still out. I'll show you how to use that telescope once... Oh, no need to convince... Brilliant. You won't? Shall we? Yeah, there is one. Burp. Bombardo. You can't imagine how inconvenient travel was before I invented it.
belly. Potions is one of the most challenging and hazardous subjects taught at this school. As fifth years, you will be required to reach new heights make the look of both discipline and similar to intellect. You will begin this term by brewing a Wigan Weld Potion. Mr. Takar, can you tell us why this particular potion might come in handy? Yes, Professor Sharp. The Wigan Weld Potion can be used to sterilize and even heal a variety of injuries. It can heal some injuries, but not all. Points for Ravenclaw. Before today's class is completed, each of you will have brewed a wig and weld potion of your own. You never know when you might need it. Please begin. Use a strong, even motion when crushing your ingredients. Please be meticulous when adding powder to your potions. One errant sneeze could be disastrous. I see most of you have not forgotten how to stir. Hmm. Not an easy potion to brew. Well done. And from what I hear of your recent exploits in Hogsmeade, you'd also do well to practice brewing the defensive Edurus potion. Professor Weasley had you acquire the recipe from Jay Pippins, correct? Yes, sir. Good. For the moment, you can find the ingredients you need in my office. But in the future, you'll be expected to provide your own ingredients. Some can be harvested from the plants you grow in your herbology class, and rarer ones can be purchased. Others, however, may be harder to obtain, and will require you to be a bit more... resourceful. Come and see me when you've finished brewing, and we'll see if it was skill or luck the first time around. Welcome, everyone. I see you've already met some of the many beasts we study in this class. Though be advised, none of these creatures should be taken lightly. They are all in their own way dangerous, especially if one does not know how to handle them properly. Now, it seems many of you are out of practice. Let's take some time to review the basics of how to care for a beast, shall we? Miss Sweeting, would you please assist our new student with the lesson today? Yes, Professor Howen. Hello, I'm Poppy, Poppy Sweeting. Don't worry about Professor Howen's speech. She over-exaggerates sometimes. <laughs> All the beasts in class are perfectly safe. Oh! Miss Sweeting, pay attention, please. The tongue of a puffskin can be a slippery devil. Uh, yes, Professor. Here. You can practice on Gerald. Just keep an eye out for his tongue. <laughs> you can use my brush. Just be gentle. Oh, and think pleasant thoughts. I like to think it enriches his experience. That's lovely. I'm sure he feels much better. I think he might be hungry. Would you mind giving him some beast feed? What do you suppose the pellets taste like to Gerald? Pudding, I like to think. <laughs> I think we can safely say that Gerald likes you. That's good news. He seems very nice. He is. 
Kindness is one of his best qualities, right after ambition and cleanliness. Good work, everyone. Now, let's make our way to the pens and select another beast. And please, do be careful as you feed and groom them. Miss Sweeting, why don't you show our new student to the Neasles in the farthest pen? This way. The Neasles are over here. A couple of knees or whiskers ought to get me a few canuts at least. Enough to buy something for honey jeeks. <laughs> oh, stupid thing. Oh. What in Merlin's name are you doing? Oh, tuss, tuss, peculiar poppy. Worried about a worthless little rodent? Her name is Persephone! <laughs> Her name is Persephone. <laughs> That's really not funny. <sighs> Let's go. Those two don't belong anywhere near this class. Poachers in training. Persephone was on to them instantly. Thank you for your help. Let's carry on. Feed and brush the measles just as you did with Gerald. <laughs> the measles really took to you. They know a good egg when they see one. As do I. It appears our time has come to an end. Now, where is our new student? Hello, Professor. You wanted to speak with me? It was wonderful, I believe. Good. You seem to understand that when beasts are properly con... Some provide us with magically imbued materials. If cared for correctly, which does not include torturing them for whiskers. Well done, by the way. Yes, Professor. They're nearly as bad as the savages in Rookwood's poacher pack. Sadly, stumbling over dead beasts. Terror. Surely the poachers can be brought to justice by someone. The minute. Hmm. An optimistic idea. Now, why don't. Professor Weasley has asked that I prepare some assignments designed. Be on the lookout for my app. Meanwhile, I also encourage you to study a... Assignments coming along. I completed your assignments, Professor. Good. You should be ready to learn to pulso. Let's see what you can do. Concentrate. Do not let your mind wander. You've got it now. If you'd like. I'm called Gaba. Mr. Clothen, your attention, please. Sorry, Madam Kagawa. Everyone, please welcome a new student to our flying class. Hello. The goal Hello. of today is to remind all of you how to maneuver on a broomstick safely. As broom flight is, first and foremost, a means of transportation. This, I fear, some of you have forgotten. Diving, rolling, and loop-the-loops will not be taught or in fact tolerated in this class. We'll leave that to professional Quidditch players, like the Toyohashi Tengu. Boo. Not a fan, I take it? Now, Boo. let's see how well everyone kept up with their practice over the summer holidays. 
For those who need a refresher, step up to your broom. Say up, firmly and clearly. Then kick your leg over and rest your weight on the seat. Up! Thank you. Now, your turn. Really? Up, Thank you. up. Up, you stupid ratty school broom. Up. One leg over, so there's a leg on each side. None of that side saddle nonsense. A gust of wind will throw you right off. And if you hear my whistle while you're in flight, ground yourself at once. Good. Now, for your first lesson, fly through each ring in the courtyard. Do take care. This is brilliant. The rooms are school property. I want oh, them returned in I one piece. I'm getting the hang of this. Well done. Now that you're acclimatized to your broom, let's see how well you manage with a more advanced exercise, shall we? This next set of rings will take you around the grounds for more of a challenge. What have you? Hello. Nice day for a flight. This is rather fun. Oh, oh the old fun. boathouse. Wish you could have experienced crossing the lake as a first year. I watched you fly through those rings. You seem to handle yourself on that dusty school broom well enough. I'd imagine you're ready for something a bit more challenging. But I'm getting ahead of myself. We haven't properly met. I'm Everett Clopton. Am I right in suspecting that a Gryffindor like you might be interested in a high-flying adventure? Can't say no to that. What did you have in mind? A bit of a detour, so to speak. Follow me. The tour is about to begin. Follow closely now. Right now, we're flying over the Transfiguration Courtyard. <laughs> Lovely as ever. Let's hope the Headmaster isn't having tea by the window today. Nice to get above it all, isn't it? Ahead of the gardens, the Hufflepuff common room windows just peek out. Bit claustrophobic for my taste. <sighs> How is Everett flying so quickly? Here's something handy to know. Lean forward for a burst of speed. Helpful if you need to escape a tricky situation. <laughs> now that's more like it. You sure you're not part hippogriff? There's the famous bridge. Think of all the magic holding it up. I mean, look at it. And the Owlery. That's a bit of solid architecture, isn't it? Flying tips and a jaunt around Hogwarts. This is quite the tour, Everett. That's Kagawa's whistle. This concludes our tour. Best hurry back. and 
hand in our brooms. Dismount here. And where have you two been? Oh, hello, Professor. <laughs> oh. We were trying to get a bit of extra practice in. Hefty points will be taken from each of you for not following my instructions. Hefty. Mr. Clopton, I am disappointed in you. You're in this class because you're still because you're still not showing yourself, or frankly, your broom the proper respect. But, Professor. Enough. Class is finished for the day. As for you, you do well to use better judgment in the future. Chin up. That was some rather good flying. Wonderful to see you again. I've completed my assignment. Pleased to hear it. Professor Weasley, I'll be sure to let her know how well... Thank you, Professor. Wingardium Leviosa requires a bit of concentration and a nice... When executed correctly, you should be able to pick up boulders as though they were sprigs of sneezewort. <laughs> Don't know how I missed that one, but <laughs> Mother would like to speak with me. I believe she has learned about some of what we've been up to. I'm hoping she may be easier on me if you are there. Settle down, settle down. Transfiguration, as you may be weary of hearing me say is an exact science that can take a lifetime to master. But we needn't be daunted. Almost anything can be transformed if you can just perceive the potential within it. As I see in all of you, tremendous witches and wizards, every one of you. Or it could just be my eyesight. Now, you all know what to do. Beautifully done. Can we meet at the Three Broomsticks? It may finally be safe since we rescued the dragon from Horntail Hall. You wanted to discuss my program? I did. You seem to have had no trouble. And frankly, excelling. Thank you, Professor. The extra... As I suspected they would be. Now, it seems you've been making excellent use of the opportunities presented by your... Of course, the guide isn't the only measure. I've heard that you were able to grow a venomous tentacular. Growing such a magical plant is an accomplishment of which you can be... Thank you, Professor. I will say I'm especially impressed with all you've accomplished. Was your visit to the kitchens and the Hogsmeade graveyard with Nick to bribe a ghost for information connected... Professor Fig has encouraged me to explore when I can, in... I see. I admire your penchant for learning, but do remember that your classwork and field guide... It'll be the end of the year in no time, and you'll want to be well prepared for your OWLs. I'll provide a final assessment at that time to ensure that you're ready for your exams. Until then, well done.
Thank you. 